This will be the build video for this motorized toy I've just built. It's a it's a uh, tracked version of a wheeled version I built a couple of weeks ago. I'll, just, I'll demonstrate it first. Let's turn it on. Got LEDs for lights. Let you, in, you know when it's on. Coke can RC controller. Forward goes forward in reverse. It spins for steering. This is going to be the build video, so I'm going to start tearing it down to show you how it's made. It's held together mostly by uh, three millimeter screws to get the, the the body, the torso, and the head are all glued together. The little helmet or a cap is held on by magnets here and magnets here that are glued in place with super glue. You can see the LEDs for the eyes down in there. It has the same basic wiring as the last one I did, the wheeled version. To uh, disassemble it, first of all, we need to take off this little blade in the front. Held on by four three millimeter screws, eight millimeters long. There's the blade, punched just like that on the bill plate. Got some supports right here, tree supports I used. Next thing we need to do is take the body off. Two screws in the back, two in or two in the front, two in the back. You assemble it just in the opposite order. It's really not that hard to assemble. The electronics are the main, the hardest part of it, building this. Kind of a tight fit. Oh, I forgot. You have to, uh, there's, uh, plugs down in there for, uh, plugging in the LEDs. Let's unplug those. I just got the LEDs stuck in there for now. You'd want to glue them in with some, probably hot glue would be the best choice for that. Now the body should come off. Good. Always had it in the past. There it goes. A little bit of a tight fit in the back. There's a Coke can RC controller here. The main body, the torso, and the head are glued together. Not sure if I mentioned that or not. Helmet's held on by magnets. This, these two controls, the smokestack, and these grills, and the headlights are all just glued on so it can be printed in different colors easily. Arms are held on with two screws going in from the side. I believe they were either 8 or 10 millimeters. I can't remember. You can see underneath it. I believe I printed this with some supports here. If you're using the Bamboo Labs A1 Mini, I'll have precise files, a, pre a project file from uh, Bamboo Studio. Should make that pretty easy. Just for fun, we'll demonstrate it with its body off. Thing come out a little bit on the heavy side. It's 12 ounces, which is uh, feels pretty heavy to me. But it has uh, three double A's driving it, so it seems to be handling it pretty well. The tracks came out a little loose compared to my original version. I just the only thing I did different was put some champers on the bottom of these to kind of avoid some of the elephant's foot problem. I'm, well, I'm leaving them a little loose because. One, they work fine. They don't come off or anything. And this one here, I printed on an Ender 3, Creality Ender 3, uh, 0.2 millimeter layer height. Now, I did have to crack every one of these, like 
where they were stuck together. It wasn't that big a deal. Then exercised it a little. So I'm leaving it loose. So hopefully this will be printable on any uh, on any printer. I'm hoping. Uh, I don't think I'm going to take it much farther apart. I'll just point out some things. Down here, the switch. It's a switch I always use. It's a tiny little switch. And there's a little clamp thing right here that just sets down over it uh, to hold it in. Screw in from the bottom to hold that switch clamp down. And that, that will hold the, the switch in a pocket there. These uh, gears all have uh, counter boards to, to take that screw in just a little bit. The, this is the, well, I need to explain that in case you haven't seen it before. This swinging or floating pivot, floating uh, idler, yeah, that's probably the best name for it. Right here is how it works for steering. This, this one will always turn the same direction. This track will always turn the direction that the motor is spinning. That's how it gets its uh, steering. This floating, floating pinion, uh, it requires a little bit of friction somewhere right in here between these, these two so that when this motor drives it it will leave it, it will go the direction of the motor it will swing this way or that way if it's just sitting there really free it may just sit there and just dance around so to get that little bit of friction the screw is going through a small o-ring but uh, the screw goes through the small o-ring and into this idler lever back here idler yeah i think that's what i called it idler level idler leveler lever yeah something like that but anyway but that, that uh you want to tighten that up just a little but don't get too carried away just you just want a little bit of a drag on it so it it will pivot with the motor when the mo way the motor spins this one here this is a, this is a little uh idler gear it, but it's mounted permanently all the uh all the parts like these uh drive wheels this is the undriven wheel this is the dr driven wheel all these gears anything that has to work freely on it not this one anything that has to work freely on a three millimeter screw i just drill them out with an eighth, eighth inch drill or a three millimeter drill should work eighth inch drill is just a tiny bit little or bigger three double a batteries I just got them double-sided taped down in, there's a pocket here they fit in. I got a little wire tie there to hold some wires in place. These are the wires that go to the LEDs. You got to mark one, one for, uh, black one for ground and the other one for the positive. Okay, I got my LEDs wired. I put the resistors on the positive side and just run both uh, cathodes to the ground together these are just leads they would seem to work okay this is with, of course the RC re receiver from the coke can RC car this is the hardest part uh, to build it's just this is exactly the same circuit as I used on the last one Here's the circuit. Hope you can see that. Here's it, here it shows the wiring of the LEDs up here. The battery coming through the switch. And the two wires going to the motor. Uh, I think I did a little more information on this in the last video. But this, this will be included in the thing, thing of verse. 
I don't think there's anything else I'm missing. Oh, when you put these, when you put these tracks together, you have to push them together. This may not be easy. If it's not easy, what you want to do, there's a couple of things you can do. There's a little nub here that fits in to a pocket on this end. And what you can do, you can set them on a table like this with an X-Acto knife. Just cut about one. I have to get some uh, magnification to do this. My eyes are not that good. You want to take about one whiff of a blade off. Shave about one whiff of the exacto blade off these. These four ones right here. Just and you can also take your knife and just don't get carried away. Just make a little bit of a entry right there on these this end. Hope that's showing up. But anyway, a combination of those a combination of those two things, just sneak up on it will allow you to eventually push these together. I'm not gonna do it now because I have to have to get in a better place than this. The other thing when you're putting them together, there is an upside and a downside or a bottom and a top to this. This is the, uh, the part that goes on the build plate is the outside. The part with all these little pockets in here is the inside. So, and you can't put it together, and you can put it together wrong. Don't put it together like that. Put it together like that. Like I say, you just have to work at it to get that. To, you want to shave some off those little nubs right there. I'm not going to do it now because I had to get closer to it with some magnification. Uh, trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you to build it. Uh, this little screw right here holds the motor in. I believe it's 30 millimeters long. It's the only oddball one on there. Yeah, it's 30 millimeters long. Only use one. You just want to get it down where all this is working freely and engaging good and lock it in place. Well, well, there's one other thing. I'm going to include a part, this, in the files. I haven't tried it yet. Well, I've, I've uh, put it on here. It does fit. This is like a body, but it's a body that if you wanted to, you could glue things to. There's a lot of people on the internet making uh, like tonks and things where they just take and start gluing gluing things to uh, together and end up with a nice thing, like a tank shaped thing or whatever. There's a, many channels who build things like this out of old junk. It's pretty fascinating to watch and then they paint it all up. The painting usually is what really puts it over the edge. But anyway, I've included this. I, think I may in the future uh, do that. Put this on there. That'll give me my, my base for whatever I want to put on there. Make a talk out of it or something. And I've also include will include in the uh, files plugs. That will, if you were to take them into Tinkercad, and I haven't tried this yet, so this is just an idea. If you were to take them into Tinkercad, you could take this, add all kinds of shapes, uh, 3D shapes, whatever you want to put on there, make it look however you want it to look. And you could take that plug and use it as a hole to cut all this out. There's also a plug for cutting uh, through here, I believe. There's two different plug files in there. You just have to line them up. I'm not, I'm not sure if that'll work or not, but uh, I'm going to probably give it a try. That's why I included this. Basically, I had to have the plug anyway to, to 
do what I was doing to make all this. So I just thought I'd take it a little bit further. Well, I think that's it. Uh, like, like I said, the files will be on Thingiverse, Printables, and Maker World. Uh, thanks for watching.